Hey guys, Desolator Magic here. Welcome to my exclusive Magic the Gathering channel. So obviously we're covering Flesh and Blood. You might think, oh, Des finally learned Flesh and Blood after talking about maybe doing it. You underestimate my level of procrastination. No, we're going to review cards without knowing a dang thing about them. Because that totally didn't just piss off the Yu-Gi-Oh crowd when I made that last week. I'll be honest with you, that one I exaggerated a little, okay? I know how to pronounce Xyz, I know how the zones work. I have a basic understanding of Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm a magic player, it's my job to troll them, and I, I have to troll the Yu-Gi-Oh players because I have to also smell the Yu-Gi-Oh players occasionally, so it's a give and take. Flesh and Blood, I legitimately know nothing about. So, like, the, these cards were recommended by uh, my Discord channel people. So, like, let's just start with 0 to 60. It just says boost. I don't know what that means. It's got in the top right, I think that was a symbol for one of the spells in an RPG I just played. And the left, we've got three little, uh, we'll go with Dragon Balls, because that's what I called them in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, that's probably the rarity. Because it looks like more of a cost in the in the right, because there's a zero. Yeah, let's go with that. So this is like super rare, because it's like three Dragon Balls. So obviously we've got, um, you know, the six million dollar man, you know, with his little 80s video radial blur going on there. And then it just says boost. Little teeny tiny word boost. We've got all this open free space, and they're just like, let's just like whisper it. It's just like, boost. Now, okay, I don't exactly have to get out the rule book every time a Magic the Gathering card writes haste on the top, but uh, they do commonly, for keywords, if there's enough space on the card, put what they call reminder text. So, I'm going to take a wild guess that boost probably is equivalent to haste now that I say it. So, this is a mechanologist action attack, which, um, that sounds like a made-up term. Like, oh, I wanted to go get my mechanics degree, you know, at, at the community college, but that was too much time and money, so I just became a mechanologist. It's like a mechanic, but I just took a one-week course and got a certificate on the internet. And so it has two little yellow diamonds and three, I assume, toughness, hit points, armor. I don't know. That one's pretty obvious. So, I mean, obviously, I got to rate this. I got to go fast out of 10. Very powerful card in, in my professional opinion. So next up, we've got Endless Arrow. Oh, and this one is only one Dragon Ball out of three. I, I bet it is rarity. So it's still zero in the right. I don't know what that is. Uh, arrows can only be played from Arsenal, <laughs> okay? And uh, only if you control a bow. So you have to be an Arsenal fan, which, uh, you know, good luck with that. But yeah, you, you can't just fire arrows without a bow. I mean, did they really need that reminder text? So uh, if Endless Arrow hits, put it into your hand. Now, if you had an endless arrow or an infinite arrow or a returning arrow, you know, like XL3, I always reference that, wouldn't you want it to return either 100% of the time or when you miss so you can fire it again? If you already hit your target, I mean, yeah, okay, it'd be nice to get the arrow back, but if you put it into the tree next to him, okay, now you really want your arrow back. I feel like endless arrow is a bit of a marketing gimmick then because, like, if you miss with it and it doesn't return, what's the point? I'm just saying. So it's uh, four diamonds and, and three toughness, so... Pretty uh, spicy card, obviously, and I'm going to rate it an arrow out of 10. All right, next up we've got, uh, I assume it's Tome of the R Knight, because if it was Ark Knight, it would be spelled with a C or a CH. So Tome of the R Knight is back up to three Dragon Balls. That, that's This is probably like the best card in the game. Wait, did I just say that? Anyway, it's it's one swirly things from that game I just played. It looks like the guy in the front of the book is doing like a spicy pepper challenge, which uh, that's pretty big on YouTube right now, but even bigger is reviewing cards from uh, games that you've never played before. But obviously I would never stoop so low as to follow a dumb trend like that. Well, anyway, reveal the top two cards of your deck. If you reveal an attack action card and a non-attack action card this way, put them into your hand and then go again. Go where? Where am I going? What does that mean? Take another turn? Is this a turns card? You know what? I want this man just on, on the basis of that. Really, anything that does anything again in Magic is, is already kind of getting the ire of players lately. We have a ban announcement tomorrow, so... Yeah, this says it's a Runeblade action. I assume that's like the faction or the deck type or something. I, I have no idea. <laughs> so this has zero little yellow diamond arrow things and two armors. Probably because this isn't an attack. Ha! Huh. I'm learning the game without even reading the manual. What's up? I gotta say, what are the odds of your two cards matching exactly what they just said? My guess is not high. I, I don't think this is a very good card, so I'm gonna relate it. Unreliable Fire Breathing Book out of 10. Next up, we've got Kyo Berserker Runt. Oh, this is structured way differently. There's nothing in the top corners. Okay, so whenever you play an attack action card with six or more a base... Why is this so blurry and low res? Base, something vaguely round and yellow. 
Oh wait, no, it's that it's a symbol from before. Uh, roll a six-sided die on one to four. Have the attacks base. I'll, I'll guess attack is what it's supposed to be. Rounded down five or six. Double the attacks base attack. Oh, gamble. Oh, I love it when people win card games based on 100% luck and not decision-making, pace, prediction, playing cards at the right time, or building a deck correctly. That's totally not what's wrong with Magic right now. So it says, Brute Hero hyphen Young. So he's young and he's the runt of the litter. <laughs> Boy. I'm going to rate this certified S-M-O-L meme spelling of small out of 10. Oh yeah, the numbers and crap. So this has um four... Blue flowers and 19. Wait, every card we've seen so far has like a two on it. What the hell is a 19? Anyway, he's got 19 um green swirlies. That probably means a thing. Next up, Shania. Or pardon me, it's not Shania Twain. That's Shiana. Hold on, let me Google this. Oh no, she does look like Shania Twain. I mean, look at them side by side. That's her. Before she gained a little weight, I'm just going to say it. So Shania here is part of the, the Diamond Gemini... Or wait, no, is that is that her title? <laughs> I just assumed that was like a guild or something. <laughs> sure, she's from the Diamond Gemini faction. I don't know. She's the diamond of the, the Gemini people. Heck if I know. And she says, you may uh, have specialization cards of any hero in your deck. Fantastic. Sounds flexible. Uh, at the beginning of your action phase, Shania Twain becomes a copy of target hero. Holy crap. <laughs> Until the uh, start of your next turn. And gains cards you own are the class of your hero in addition to their other class types. Wait, can't you just, you'd be, what, copying your opponent's, like, cards or something? And then you could just run a total free-for-all anything? I mean, it says Shapeshifter. I know what those do in MTG, and they're they're pretty egregious. Oh, I get it. That's why she looks like Shania Twain, because she's a Shapeshifter. Boom! Lore bit for ya. I bet I just accidentally discovered some. Watch for the MatPat uh, game theory on it. So anyway, she has four blue flowers and 20 swirlies, which if I recall is better than uh, Runty Boy. So, uh, oh yeah, it's one better. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Data Doll Mark II, which it has some things in the top right and left, but those aren't numbers. So, okay. I honestly didn't know this game had like robots and crap, dude. This is like some cyberpunk crap. I, I thought it was like all swords and medieval and traditional fantasy. So whenever a mechanologist, a.k.a. fake mechanic that you shouldn't let anywhere near your car, uh, item with cost two or less is put into your banished zone. Ooh, is that like the Shadow Realm? From your deck, put it into the arena. Oh, that's probably something. That probably does a thing. Uh, all I know is that magic card recursion is, 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 it's good. I mean, that's one, one adjective I could use. I could use some others, but then I'd have to get out the sensor bleep button. And this is a mechanologist hero. Young. Why are they all young? What does that mean? It's a robot. It doesn't age. What do you mean young? Well, anyway, it's three flowers and 20 swirlies, which seems awfully similar to the other things. Oh, I think I forgot to rate the last couple. Uh, I'm going to rate this. Um, Robot Thunder Thighs out of 10. Next up, Tripwire Trap, which, my god, how did he not see those? Those are the size of, like, monkey bars. And secondly, you activated my trap card. I had to say it. So this is still zero swirlies and one Dragon Ball. I guess we're back to that again. I guess that means something. Uh, traps could only be played from Arsenal because Arsenal is a bunch of cheating bastards. Just kidding. I couldn't give less of a crap about British football. As if they're not the ones who came up with the word soccer. Denial is not just a river in Egypt, my British friends. Apparently it's association football, and then they just added er to the end of everything for like 10 years. That's a fact I heard on the internet, but I bet you a tenor it's true. So anyway, uh, hit effects that don't trigger this chain link. What? Unless the attacking hero pays... One Dragon Ball. Wait, is that a full sentence? Hit effects don't trigger this chain link. Oh, unless the attacking player pays one Dragon Ball. Okay, got it. The attacking hero chooses whether to pay one Dragon Ball as Tripwire Trap resolves. And it's a Ranger Defense Reaction Trap. So slightly different than the traps you typically see at Comic-Con. And this one has no pointy things that were in the left, but it has four shields. So, I mean, I, I don't need to tell you what that means, strategy-wise. Moving on... The hell is this? Is this even from the same game? Why is this sideways? Now y'all are just screwing with me. For all I know, my Discord server people just snuck in some fan art or something. I don't know. Well, th no, this has the swirly, but then it has, I don't know what the hell that is in the in the top left. I don't know what that is. No idea. 
And my God, could they upload this at a lower resolution? So this is Korshem Crossroad of Elements, Elemental Action Landmark. Oh, landmarks. So you have to stop playing the game and then you have to stop, take a photo of it, and then get all the kids back in the minivan. That makes sense. I, I know some of the rules of the game. So it says, if I squint, when you arrive at the legendary Korshem, go again. So you gotta take two pictures. Whenever a hero reveals a card, they gain one Dragon Ball or gain one of the swirly things from that other card, or their next attack this day gains plus one pointy thing, or the next action card they defend with this day gets plus one. I don't think we've seen. Oh no, no, what a shield, one shield. Okay. Uh, as sunset each or at sunset each day, I can read. Depart Korsham if no hero gained. Oh, if no, if no hero gained any of the Dragon Balls. The the different circles, the, the different colored spheres, the, the, the taste of the rainbow. You know, I gotta say, this looks like a, a plane chase card from MTG. And it's kind of phrased like it, too. I'm kind of wondering if it works like that, because it says depart. And Korshem says landmark. So, like, I don't know. That, that would be cool if that's a thing. Plane chase is my favorite magic format. I'm just throwing that out there. So next up, oh, my lady, we've got Ragamuffin's hat. Oh, ho, gentlemanly pipe. We've got the sarcastically gigantic and curled uh, mustache and the ridiculous overcompensating beard. And then he went with the purple ribbon and the feathers so that you are well, well aware, even from 100 feet away, that he is absolutely fabulous. So Mr. Uh, Hipster Pimp Wannabe here says, uh, oh, this doesn't have like anything in any corners. What? <laughs> How do you, how do you do this? And it has zero shields. I don't know. Uh, instant, destroy Ragamuffin's hat, draw a card, then put a card from your hand on the top or bottom of your deck. Activate this ability only if you have one card in hand. Oh, so it's a little like, oh, I've got nothing left. Let's take a shot at this kind of card. Okay. Just look at this guy though. You destroy his hat. He is going to make eight Reddit posts about it on eight different subreddits. Probably get seven of them deleted. And the eighth one, he's the moderator. And I love how it's like the world's fanciest hat and everybody's staring at him. And yet it's a generic equipment. <laughs> Sorry, bro. You ain't special. You and your little Etsy hat that you paid a hundred bucks to get from, uh, you know, Turkmenistan. And it's really just from China. Oh, we all fall for the mass production scams at least once in our life on Etsy. Maybe you should just uh, get a job, shave your beard, and get a life. Next up, yes, Stony Wooten Hog. Can we get a Woot in the chat for the big pigo? Yes, ride the porker into battle. Dude, those things, though, if you haven't seen them, like, thousand-pound hogs that are in, like, like, North Texas and all over the American South because they're, like, an invasive species from, I don't know, I assume an alien planet or, like, a Lord of the Rings movie, they will, like, rip up an entire farmer's field in, like, a night, dude. These You do not want to mess with these hogs, and that thing looks about double the size of those. Yeah, if this thing's coming for you, you better woot the heck out of there. So Mr. Stony Wootown Hog right here has all three Dragon Balls, obviously, and costs two Swirlies, which I think is the highest Swirly we've seen. I really hope I'm right about that number being a cost. I think I've said it a dozen times so far. God forbid I get one of the details slightly wrong in this video. That would be devastating to my reputation. So while Mr. Mad Wooter here is defended by less than two non-equipment cards, it has plus one arrow diamond thing. But it already has four, so I mean, that's, I told you these things will mess you up. But it only has two, uh, shieldy boys, slash toughness, slash hit points, slash armor. That seems low. This, this guy probably weighs more than my car. So next up, we got Cracked Bobble. It is two Dragon Balls out of three, and it has a blank in the upper right, so no swirlies. Cool. And then, like, the whole card is reminder text. <laughs> what? Or whatever you call it in your world. That's what we call it in the magic world. I mean, it's in italics and parentheses. I'm pretty sure it's reminder text. So, Cracked Bobble exists to support booster draft and sealed formats. What? Is this a real card? A player may add any number of Cracked Bobbles to their deck. Typically, a player would only do this if they did not have enough legally playable cards to make a 30-card minimum deck. What? That's like, oops, I drafted three colors and then there's no synergy. I better cut one. Oh, crap, I can't get to 40. Yeah, welcome to Magic the Gathering right there, I'm telling you. So you just you throw this in and it, it just says generic resource and it is nothing and does nothing except for probably what's in the top left. Wow. Why don't they call it, instead of Cracked Bobble, uh, you done messed up or the, the Sphere of Oopsies. Oh, my gosh, or the Artifact of Shame. I can see why this was the first one that people recommended, because that is hilarious. 
By the way, in Magic, you would just stuff basic lands in there and pretend like, oh, I've got really high CMC and need good color fixing. Oh, yeah, I threw this in. Okay, I was looking at, like, these, these cards to get the images of them on some, I don't know, database website thing. What the actual tap dancing heck does any of this rainbow bright looking oil spill mean? It's like the different sets or editions that this was printed in. Don't they all just say the same thing? Like, what? oh no, they have different prefixes. But th it was in the the Kruog set, but then also the other Kruog set, and then also the other Kruog set. Oh, but additionally, the other Kruog set. How many reprints have there been? What is wrong with this game? Am I missing something? Are these different like trims or alternate artworks or something? Are they already jumping on that bandwagon? Did they go full Pokemon and then Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever, where there's like the ghost rare and the extended ghost rare, the rainbow alternate art borderless trainer and the secret shadow shiny one in a trillion worth more than your life Charizard. Woo. Now, obviously the bottom ones, I mean, it's like the, the prefix is like French and Spanish and Japanese and Italian and all that. But like, how do you explain the fourth and fifth one? We've got, we've just the first one. It's, it's Krog. And then we've got you Kruog. Then we've got you Kruog RF. So I assume the RF distinction is really flamboyant or rainbow flare edition. Ha, cracked your little code flesh and blood. You thought you could keep your secrets from me, but uh, anyway, next up we got Alpha Rampage. I think this is the last card. Oh no, there's one after this. Anyway, yeah, this is Alpha Rampage. And then they basically drew like the artistic depiction of toxic masculinity. Oh, I should have checked if the makers of this game are dumbass SJW feminists, because then I could uh, rip them apart for that. But uh, for now, we'll just rip apart people's heads on the battlefield. Because that's the most alpha crap ever! So, uh, Mr. Alpha Rampage is three swirlies, but only one Dragon Ball, and uh, Rhinar Specialization. <laughs> the heck does that mean? Oh, <laughs> reminder text. You may only have Alpha Rampage in your deck if your hero is R Rhin Rhinar? Rhino? A Rhino? Dude, they gotta get these in a higher quality. What is up with these low-res-ass JPEGs? I get it, it's anti-counterfeiting measures, but they just resort to scanning the card these days. It's 2022. So anyway, as an additional cost to play Alpha Rampage, you must not be a beta male. Makes sense, they didn't need to put that reminder text on the card. And of course it has Intimidate. I'm not even convinced that that means anything in the game significant, they just wrote the word Intimidate on the bottom of the card for style. So this guy has nine, count em, nine yellow pointy gems, but only three shieldy boys. So very... High risk, high reward? I have no idea. And, uh, oh, there's two cards left. So this one is Showtime. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah, right after our Alpha Male, we've got Mr. Mustache Long Hair doing magic tricks. I could elaborate, but let's move on. Uh, this is three Swirlies, three Dragon Balls. Oh, crap, does that mean he's more powerful and more rare than Alpha Rampage? Damn. Who would have thought? So, uh, 80s hairband pirate hair has a mallet, and it says, Bravo Specialization. Yeah, mallet proficiency, obviously. I play D&D, &D, okay. I, I know a, a, a wooden mall when I see it. Wait, maybe he's really small and that's a judge's gavel. Maybe he stole that from Judge Judy. I don't know the lore of the game, so you'll have to fill me in in the comments section, but uh, you may only have Showtime in your deck if your hero is Bravo. I assume that's like Italian for fabulous. Anyway, when Showtime enters the arena, search your deck for a guardian attack action card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck, and at the beginning of your action phase, I think that's the first time we've heard that term, destroy Showtime, then draw a card. It's a delayed trigger tutor? My god, this would be a damn good card in, in Magic. No wonder it's three swirlies and three Dragon Balls, jeez. But it's got zero pointy boys, but it's got three shieldies, so... Defensive card? I don't know. And finally, we've got nimblism, which I, I guess they're just making up words. I don't, I, I've heard of the word nimble. I don't think I've heard of the word nimblism, but it's a zero swirly three dragon ball card. So uh, probably significant. And it says the next attack action card with one cherry flavored Skittle or less. You play this turn gains plus one pointy boy. Go again. Where am I going? What what am I, what, is, what does that mean? Is that another extra turn card? Okay, then I hate this. I, oh, I forgot to do the ratings. I give this uh, extra turns and actions can go die in a fire in every TCG ever made out of 10. Well, at least it only has two shields. So that has been my 
expert review of some of the just random cards that people recommended in my Discord. Oh, and if you're a flesh and blood player and you've already typed basically a short novel about how to play the game and how many ways I'm wrong, uh, I hate to inform you of this because it flew over your head, but that's the point. And also, I'm never going to learn the game. Sorry, it's too expensive. So, uh, if the whole video didn't piss you off, that probably did it. Leave a like, leave a dislike, leave the video. I don't care at this point. <laughs> Go sub to one of my other channels. They're better. But if you do have recommendation for a TCG for me to review next, leave that tasty morsel down in the comment section, and I will see you guys next time.